Right. So, cast diagram. This is what we're used to. We're used to doing a cast diagram in degrees. So we start with zero degrees. We move around in an anti-clockwise direction in chunks of 90 degrees. So we're really used to this. And we can keep going round and round in chunks of 90 degrees. So 450, 540, 630, 720. And if we want to, we can go in a clockwise direction, which would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, and so on. Now, all that's going to happen is we're going to do this with a cast diagram, but with radians. So we start with zero radians. We move round in the anti-clockwise direction. Now, instead of 90 degrees, we'll be going pi by two radians. Another 90, or well, which would have been 180 degrees, but that's pi radians. So instead of moving round in chunks of 90 degrees, you're moving round in chunks of a half pi. So this would be one and a half pi radians, but we tend to write it like that. We wouldn't really write 1.5 pi radians. Two pi radians, then again, two and a half, which we tend to write as five over two pi, three pi, and so on. So seven pi over two, four pi, and on and on and on. And of course, you can go in the clockwise direction. So in, in chunks of negative pi over two radians. So it works exactly the same as with degrees. You're just in chunks of a half pi rather than 90 degrees. Right, so question one, we're gonna solve this equation here. So I'm just gonna bring that slightly down. Okay, we're gonna solve cos x equals 0 0.25. And we can see that our angles are in radians. There's no degree symbol and the multiple of pi there gives it away. So make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Remember, most of you have got those calculators where it'll tell you what mode you're in. So I'm gonna draw my cast diagram. I'm going to circle the quadrants where cos is positive. I'm going to inverse cos 0 0.25 on my calculator, and that gives me 1.32. And then I'm just simply going to draw 1.32 into each of my ringed quadrants. I'm then going to read that off from zero. So I'm going to get 1.32 radians. And I'm then going to go all the way around to two pi radians and then come back. So two pi minus 1.32 is 4.96 radians. And what you could do is you could take the cos of both of those angles and check that they are both 0 0.25. So question two, so slightly harder. So question two, You've got the tan of 2x equals negative 1. So, and you've got a, your angle in interval notation. Now, that means that x lies between minus pi and pi, not equaling them. First thing I notice is that I've got a multiple angle there. So, I'm going to change my range just so I don't miss any solutions. So, that's the first thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to solve for 2x and then I'm going to divide by 2 at the end. So, get my cast diagram. Tan is negative, so I'm going to circle the quadrants where tan is negative. Right, what I'm going to do to get my acute solution, remember I can just ignore the sign because I've already dealt with it. The inverse tan of 1 is a nice exact multiple. Obviously in degrees we know it would be 45, but in radians it's pi by 4. So you draw into your ringed quadrants from the positive x-axis and now let's read off. So if we start from here, we're going to have pi minus pi by four, which is three quarters pi. And we're going to go all the way around to two pi minus pi by four, which is seven quarters pi. And now I'm gonna go in the negative direction. So minus a quarter pi, and then minus pi 
take away another quarter pi, which is minus five quarters pi. Now, they are my solutions to 2x, okay? I've put x down, but quickly I've spotted it and I've changed it. They are my solutions to 2x. What I'm now going to do to get my solutions for x is divide all through by 2. So I'll have 3 eighths pi, 7 eighths pi, minus pi over 8, and minus 5 eighths pi. And you can see that all of these lie in that range. And of course, what you could do is you could just find the tan of double that and check that it's minus one, and you could check them all that way. Right, next question. So, slightly harder range here. So, that should say solve sine. Just quickly change that, we had no trigger in there. So, we're solving the sine of theta plus pi by two equals 0.3, where theta lies in this range. So, the first thing I'm gonna do here, because I'm a bit afraid of it, is alter my range. So I'm gonna have my range now going between pi by two and two pi plus pi by two, which is two and a half pi or five pi over two. Now I can't visualize those very clearly. So I'm just gonna work them out as decimals to give me a better idea. So by putting those in my calculator, I've got them as decimals. I know that's roughly 1.57, that's roughly 7.85. So I'm now going to get my cast diagram and it's sine. So I'm looking where sine is positive. It's positive in those two quadrants. I'm going to inverse sine 0 0.3, which is 0 0.305. And I'm going to draw those in my ringed quadrants. I'm now going to read off my solutions, but they're my solutions for theta plus pi by two. So my first one is 0 0.305. Now I'm interested in that because that's too small. That's outside my range. So I'm going to end up discounting it. I'm then going to have pi minus 0 0.305, which is 2.84. And I'm going to go all the way around again. So two pi plus three, sorry, plus 0 0.305 which is 6.58. Now these two are in my range, this one isn't. So I'm now gonna take my half pi of both of these and I'm gonna get the solutions 1.27 and 5.01. So there are my solutions. Again, I can check those by putting them back in. Right, question four. Question four, so a slightly more complicated question where you've got a, a little bit to manipulate before you start. And of course, what we've got here is theta lying between pi and minus pi given in interval notation. So I'm going to make that, so that should be a square bracket. Okay, what is re tempting to divide through by cos theta, but of course, you know that if cos theta can equal zero, then you if you, you can't divide by it because you can't divide by zero. So what you would do is you would bring that over here to the other side, you would take cos theta off both sides and you would take out a factor of cos theta. So either cos theta equals zero or you're gonna have for sine theta minus one equals zero. So that would mean sine theta equals a quarter. So it's up to you how you solve this. You should have a good idea. I mean, you could use the cast diagram or you should have a good idea of what the curve, the cos curve looks like between pi and minus pi. So you know that your cos curve looks like that. So instantly I can see that theta is pi by two and minus pi by two. If I couldn't, I could still use cast to get that. Here, straightforward cast. So you know sine is positive here and here. 
if I inverse sine a quarter, I get 0 0.253. And I'm going to draw it into my ringed quadrants. So my solutions are going to be 0 0.253. And my next solution is pi minus 0 0.253, which will be 2.89. So four solutions there. Number five. Again, harder still. So... Quickly assess the situation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take root 3 cos theta off both sides. I'm now going to divide both sides by cos theta. And of course, I know that that is tan theta. Check my range. I know that tan is negative in C and S, so I'm going to inverse tan root 3. And of course, the inverse tan of root 3 is pi over 3. That's my acute solution. It's not a solution because that's negative. So you draw in pi over 3 into your ringed quadrants and you read off. So pi minus pi over 3 is 2 thirds pi. And 2 pi minus pi over 3 is 5 thirds pi. So there you have your solution. Right, question 6, slightly harder. So if you have a quick look at question 6, so quite a full on question here, show that sine x equaling 4x. Sorry, 2 sine x equals 4 cos x minus 1 all over tan x can be expressed as 6 cos x all squared minus cos x minus 2. So I'm going to take this and the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that awful tan x on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by tan x. So at least I've got rid of that awful divide by. I'm now going to rewrite tan x as sine x over cos x. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to multiply sine x by sine x and get 2 sine squared x. And at the same time, I'm going to multiply this side. I'm going to, well, I'm going to multiply all through by cos x. So that's going to give me 4 cos x all squared minus cos x. I know that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So I'm going to rearrange this to make sine squared x equal 1 minus cos squared x. So I'm going to have 1 minus cos squared x there. I'm going to expand this bracket I'm going to now add 2 cos squared x to both sides and take off 2 so I'm ending up with 6 cos squared x minus cos x minus 2 which is what I was asked to show Okay, now the second part of the question asks you to then, using this, solve it. Well, you know that you've manipulated that in the first part of the question to look like this. So you've now just got a quadratic in cos. So I'm just going to turn that over. So a quadratic in cos, just make sure I've got my paper in there, which is fine. So with my equation, 6 cos squared x minus cos x minus 2 equals 0. I'm going to make a substitution. So I've got 6y squared minus y minus 2 equals 0. Now if I was asked to show detailed reasoning, then I've got to make it look like I don't have a calculator. So I would show that I'd factorised it. 
So again, I'm showing detailed reasoning here. So factorising it, I've got those solutions. But really, that's the cos of x is minus two thirds, or the cos of x is one. Here, I would use my cast diagram. Cos is negative in S and T. If I inverse cos two thirds, I get 0 0.84. Hang on, so if I inverse cos two thirds, I get 0 0.841. So I draw that into my ringed quadrants, 841 and 8, 0.841. So that's going to give me pi minus 0 0.841, which is 2.301 and pi plus 0.841, which is 3.98. Cos x equals 1, well, you know for this range that the cos curve looks like that. So straight away, you can see that your solutions are 0 and 2 pi.